Hi, we're here at the 2023 Darden Private Equity Conference. And Sean, we just got out of a really interesting session. Uh, trends, challenges, opportunities in private equity broadly. And I guess one thing that uh, I know the room found really interesting was kind of this, this thinking around uh, how limited partners think about exposure to private equity. And I remember just being here uh, as a student, you know, you'd read these things like there are protests if there's not a high enough allocation to private equity for the pensioners because they're not getting the best returns possible for those years. But also, you know, there are protests when the fees are really high. You know, you should put us in low, you know, lower cost kinds of things. So from the LP perspective, allocating to private equity, what do you see folks doing now and kind of where are things headed next? Yeah, no, and, and certainly it's it's a little different for each client's unique, each allocator is unique, and but I would say that you know the good thing that we've been seeing is over the last you know five to ten years, certainly more LPs are are allocating a, a larger portion of their portfolio to private equity, and I, I think at the end of the day, um, we've seen private equity put up the returns to to justify that, and I, I think to your point, certainly it is. Uh, it is, you know, in some instances, you know, more expensive than a, you know, kind of a pure uh, ETF strategy, for instance. But uh, I think when you look at the alpha that uh, private equity has delivered uh, against private uh, against public markets, it, it certainly is has been a, a good investment. And I think, you know, each, like I said, each allocator is is at a different point on the journey. I think, you know, our our most sophisticated investors are allocating. Up to you know 30, 40 percent of their private of their total portfolio to private equity. Now, I at the same time I have I have new clients that I, you know I may just getting introduced to, and you know they've got a five, six percent allocation. So there's there's an education process that needs to happen. You know certainly um, with my firm and, and and that client, but at the same time. You know, these aren't these aren't things that we can change overnight, right? So that's it's a it's a journey, <laughs> and that journey may take you know three, five, seven years. So I think uh, it's certainly something that uh, the clients are are I think they're they're becoming more accustomed to it. They're at least you know we're seeing in uh, <clears throat> investment committees are are more aware of the product. They're becoming more comfortable. Then it just becomes a question of exactly how much are they comfortable with. But it, it's certainly been improving over the last, uh, you know, five or ten years here. That's so interesting. And you know, another big topic, of course, on everybody's mind, and that was discussed in session is you know, kind of ESG, let's call it. Um, and certainly, you know, this is an industry where there's there's opportunity for improvement, as I think there is broadly. How how do you counsel your clients, you know, as far as whether it's evaluating managers or you know instituting their own uh, you know their own structures and frameworks, how do you think about it? And and what how do you counsel these firms that want to do better? Yeah, so certainly um, one thing that we do in diligence when we're looking at a at a private equity manager, um, we'll actually go through and quantify on a scale of kind of one to four how we think that they are addressing um, you know the ESG initiatives and. You know, we look at it, it's 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 multivariable. So it's not simply, you know, what is their hiring policy or you know what is their environmental track record. It's it's a it's an amalgamation of all of those. And and I think you know, uh, when I'm in the position that I am in, I actually you know, my firm actually sees thousands of managers on on an annual basis. And one of the things that we, you know quickly starts to you know differentiate those firms is is who. You know who kind of plays lip service to it, and who's actually you know doing the hard work of, you know, not only, you know, instituting that as as part of their investment process, but you know, it, even making sure that it, you know, it it follows down all the way through their portfolio companies. And the other thing that's been big, I think, just in the last you know kind of three to five years, is is actually reporting, you know, that progress. Um, so I think allocators uh, are and investors are, are certainly looking at. You know, where did they say, you know, where did private equity say they were going to be and where, you know, we can actually, we've got, you know, kind of a hard documentation around uh, the progress that's been made. So I, I certainly see, you know, a lot of improvement in that area. Um, you know, certainly another piece just around the hiring, I, I think, I think, you know, private equity is kind of finally getting the, <laughs> getting the signal that, uh, you know, in order to have great returns, they need to have a diversity of opinions in the room, and 
you know, so you're starting, you're certainly starting to see some change. I think, you know, uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier in the conference. You're, you're seeing it at those kind of, you know, post MBA type levels, and it's starting to matriculate up. But I, again, it's it's been a long journey, but I, I do see progress being made there. That's impo- it's important and interesting. And I guess I wonder, Sean. Um, we started with kind of a broad trends and challenges. Can we finish with where do you see things going next? What's a big trend <laughs> you and the firm are thinking about or keeping an eye on over the next maybe 12 to 24 months? Yeah, well, I mean, everybody, you know, the, the thought on everybody's mind is, is kind of recession or not. And, uh, you know, certainly every talking head will give you an opinion. Um, I think for us, um, we're a little bit removed as, as an intermediary between investors and, and private equity, you know, on, on the consulting side. Uh, we're, we're a little bit removed from it because it's not, you know, it's not directly impacting our portfolios, uh, but it's, it's, it is affecting our client portfolios. But I think, you know, what we're trying to counsel uh, clients on is, look, you know, this is a, this is a long-term asset class, right? Uh, we're not trying to be, you know, essentially, we're not trying to be tactical, you know, moving in and out of funds on a, on a you know, a daily or weekly basis. You know, private equity, you know, many of these managers were going to be invested with at the very least seven to ten years. And in many cases, you're going to be doing two to three to four to five funds with them. So it it becomes, a you know, even a, a 30 or 40 year uh, period that you may have a relationship there. So the thing that we've just really been, you know, whether the market goes up in the back half of the year or the market goes down the back half of the year, you know, we've really been focused on, you know, making sure that, you know, investors find high quality managers. They stay consistent and uh, and don't pull back in you know in these types of markets because the problem that investors can have is you know they can actually if, if they're not deploying capital in periods like this and, and committing um, to private equity managers you know one of the things that, that John with Virginia Retirement System talked about is you know you can look down the road in five to ten years you're actually under allocated to private equity because you didn't you didn't put the, the dollars in the ground uh, beforehand to, to actually get it done. So, look, I, I don't want to try and prognosticate and say where things are going. I, I, I don't see, you know, we, we don't see a, uh, a you know, a, a cataclysm, you know, a, a, you know, a, a, a dramatic drop off in, in markets coming up. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's the unknown unknown. Uh, you know, do we get another geopolitical event that 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 really st- stirs the pot? So, I think, uh, like I said, for our, for our clients, it's it's more of a focus on kind of the long term opportunities, and uh, and I'll leave the procrastinating to the uh, to the talking heads there. That's good advice for all of us, <laughs> Sean. Thank you for being with us. Uh, no problem. Thank you for having us here, and uh, uh, always a pleasure to be on on grounds. Well, we're thrilled to have you. Thank you.